In September 1931, this street in Estevan was the scene of one of the bloodiest riots in Saskatchewan history. It pitted striking coal miners against the RCMP. The workers had justice on their side, but the police had guns. Coal mining is still one of the biggest industries in Estevan. Just like it was in the early 1930s. Only back then, it was a desperate, dirty, dangerous job. It was pretty rough in them days. Really rough in them days. When Glenn I Peterson has know, lived his entire life in Estevan. He says coal mining was a bad job to begin with. Once the depression hit and wages dropped, it got even worse. Back in them days, there was a lot of peach work. You got so much for loading a car of coal underground. And uh, maybe wages was... 25, 30 cents an hour. The miners worked long hours with no breaks. Safety rules were routinely ignored and many workers were injured or killed. By 1931, they decided it was time to do something. They were trying to form a union and uh, when that union was getting formed, that was when the trouble started. Mine managers refused to recognize the union. Coal miners refused to work until they did. After a three-week standoff, the strikers organized a sympathy parade for downtown Estevan. The RCMP brought in reinforcements and lined up across the main street. The showdown was on. From that building to the city hall is the city hall. It's where my view was in there. Glenn Peterson was just 13 years old. He skipped out of school and ran downtown the watch. He hid in a trash can where he could see everything. And, and where was, was the fire truck? Seemed like it was in front of the city hall or off to the side of the city hall a little bit. Okay. They brought the fire truck out to spray water on the, on the strikers to hold them back. The miners wouldn't back down. One man jumped in the fire engine and started swinging a crowbar. The truck still has pipe marks on it to this day. The striker was shot dead by the police. The riot was on. Well, there was so much confusion around. People running all over. Bullets flying all over. Without guns, the miners never had a chance. When it was over, three of them were dead. Eight others wounded. Peterson was rescued by his father. <laughs> My dad came and pulled me out of that trash can. And he said, you want to get yourself killed? Well, I guess we could have both been killed when he was pulling me out of there. The three miners who were killed that day are buried near Bainfate. Their headstones read, murdered by the RCMP. But Glenn Peterson doesn't believe it was all the force's fault. The strikers were putting on a lot of pressure too. They wouldn't, it, it seemed like that they wouldn't stop. Several strikers were charged following the riot. At the trial, Police testified they didn't draw their weapons until they were cornered. But photographs clearly show they had their guns out much earlier. Only striking miners were held accountable. Some were jailed. The rest gave up their fight and gave in to the mining companies. They were forced to continue to work in dangerous conditions for next to nothing. And 14 more years would pass before they finally got their union. For the CBC News Hour, I'm Bill Wazer.